Sessions. We are the bold trespassing lads and lasses all so free Who dare to walk in places where we're told we should be Where there's fences round the forest, where the beach is out of bounds Where the walls are rising round the fields that once were common ground Where the keeper's hand lies heavy and he tells you with a strut that the moves were made for shooting So the countryside is shut We will make this awful ground a call for beauty is for all We will find a gap in every hedge, a hole in every wall Our fathers sold their boots for coal or burned them for the dead While our mothers worked their weary limbs into their bosses' bread but we were born on smoky morns and streets that knew no sun The green hill wasn't far away, just waiting to be won From the mountains of Snowdonia to the waters of the broads From the lonely hills of Lakeland to the west country towards There's a treasury from sea to sea, a fell and field and plain And the warming woods are waiting for to welcome us again Upon the burning moor Said he, this land belongs to me You are breaking the law How came you by it, sir? I cried And he replied in awe That his father's 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 father Won it in a war Well, if that be true, my lord, I cried I gave a tidy bow then by the same such logic, sir I'll fight you for it now Our lungs are full, our lives are young And we will not be scared We are the feet of England And we're headed for the hill We are the bold trespassing lads And lasses all so free Who dare to walk in places Where we're told we shouldn't be We're standing in Borden Bridge quarry in Derbyshire just outside the village of Hayfield and it was exactly at this spot upon this spot on the 24th of April 1932 that 400 to 500 young ramblers convened at the start of what became known as the mass trespass of Kinder Scout. Kinder Scout is a large plateau the highest point in the Peak District right slap bang in the middle of two big industrial centres, Manchester and Sheffield, Lancashire and Yorkshire, although we're actually standing in Derbyshire. And this went down as one of the most uh, successful acts in, in civil disobedience in British history, according to many people. They were demonstrating their right to, to wander, to, to roam, to ramble freely on the beautiful countryside, uh, a right that was denied them for so many generations. And today, along with our mate Boff Wally, we're going to follow in their footsteps. <laughs> so we're ready. Uh, Michael's got his um, umbrella and his arse pocket there. And, uh, you sure it's the umbrella? This is his arse pocket. That could be quite rude. Are you pleased to see me? Anyway. <laughs> so, Boff, you're going to be our... Uh, well, not to throw this on at the last minute, but you are our guide today. Am I? Uh, are you expecting me to know things? <laughs> I believe you've written a poem for the occasion, Boff. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure I could make one of... <laughs> So, so yeah, yes. well in uh, 1932 they, they sang as they went, uh, apparently. You know what they sang? Uh, no. Oh. I get no kicks from champagne. <laughs> <laughs> Off we go. <laughs> Cuff, and we've we bumped into some friends indeed we might even call them fans yes. uh, well I would call them fans I don't know about friends but fair enough <laughs> these are people who uh, attend our singing weekends that we run fortunately we won't be able to do them this year but they have obviously not taken too kindly to receiving an email telling us that they, uh, the singing weekends aren't gone so they've been stalking us no doubt <laughs> that's what's been going on here so they've, uh, they've asked for maybe a little song since we've met and uh, so, shall we just uh, 
Give a blast of something. Yeah, a bit of the great tomorrow. A bit of the great tomorrow. We've been talking about Longstaff and his affiliation to uh, trespassing, so this seems quite appropriate. And there's a song sang upon the mountain, and there's a song upon the sea. There's a song sang in unison, and a song in harmony. And there's a song sang in every tomra, and in 47 tongues. 30,000 voices are all singing our song. And the more of us who learn to sing it then, the sooner there will be peace beneath the branches of the lime and olive tree. From mine and mill and field and shipyard, from behind the company door, from the plain fields of Eton to the warrens of the poor, from Helsinki to Buenos Aires, our reasons are the same. From Melbourne to Vancouver, now we have come to Spain. For if you sing a song of freedom, then it does not matter where. If your song is freedom, then you sing it everywhere. And there are some of our number who've known the pain of war. And there are some of our number who have never fought before. But there are none of our number would think it were in vain to, to leave their warm blood spilled upon the dry hot soil of Spain. And if I end up on the roll of honour, I'll be in good company. If there's peace beneath the branches of the lime and olive tree. One day there will be no fascist and no anti-fascist man. One day there'll be no us and one day there'll be no them. For equality is for everyone, no matter what we've done. The sins of our fathers will not ever harm our sons. And there will come a great tomorrow for everyone to see. Peace beneath the branches of the lime and olive tree. But if all our dreams are sold and bartered, and if all our names are lost, and if everything we fought for crumbles into dust, they will never take from me the love I felt that day. I went because my open eyes could see no other way. And if I live to be 100, make this my legacy. Peace beneath the branches of the lime and olive tree. Yes, if I live to be 100, make this my legacy. Nice and loud now. Peace beneath the branches of the lime and olive tree. Thank you very much. Ruining picnics everywhere. <laughs> Would you like to do one, Bob? Okay, let me try and remember the words. So Bob's going to sing us a little song now. Uh, what are you going to sing for us, Bob? Uh, from Below. Ooh, you're going to sing from below? Again? Which is strange because I'm kind of standing higher than you. Yeah, I don't know how I like the sound. He's going to sing from below. My goodness. It's not the sound I'm worried about, it's the smell. But anyway. Right, are we ready? Right, yeah. here, here we go. go. Um, let's see if I can remember the words. With a compass and a cap For a sing song and a scrap Are we bound to the lines upon the map? Hell no! Cause real change comes from below, from below, from below, from, from below. below. Real change comes from below, from below, from below. Real change comes from below. It's a place we call our own, from boundary stone to boundary stone. 
Or will they take away the right to roam? Hell no, because real change comes from below. From, from below, from below. Real change comes from below. From below, from below. Real change comes from below. For every footprint on the land, for all the banners and the band. Or will we stick to the landlord's plans? Hell no, cos real change, change comes from below. From below, from below. Real change comes from below. From below Down in the soil below. where the real ideas grow. Real change comes from below. Do you want to do the last one? Do you do the last bit again? Sorry. I did no, say it when many a song, and he lived well, after it. Yeah. <laughs> that was fine. That was brilliant. <laughs> Should we keep Lovely. moving? Should we do yeah. it? Let's go. <laughs> so here we are. We've come up William Clough, and um, it's probably taken us a little bit longer than it did in 1932. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was largely my fault. Uh, sorry about that, Mr. Cooney, just dragging you down but, there and falling around things. There's nothing like, a, you know, after a good walk, though, a Tyron walk is what makes it worthwhile is the view, isn't it? <laughs> uh, oh. And, um, yeah, it's just absolutely phenomenal to be here. And just for a, a bit of background, um, really, well, you know, the... the access to the land wasn't a new thing it was it was a people had been campaigning for it for a couple of generations and uh, and interestingly from all kinds of social classes and but what was distinctive about this is that it was it was working class young people it was actually an offshoot of the communist party buff wasn't it the yeah. the british young uh, sporting association something like that the, the ramblers association disowned it that's right they yeah said they would yeah. they wouldn't be part of it if they so, were going to break the law yeah. yeah and it's great to know that even though that is like an intensely political thing that now it's just an accepted thing that these people what these people did for us uh, was to was to spur on the the cause of of walking in in the countryside and and um, interestingly, me and Buff were just chatting about um, it was three three weeks before something like that. Um, Benny Rothman, who was the organizer of, of the trespass, he took some friends from the south up to to go walking nearby, and they were turned back by a group of gamekeepers. Um, and there was about five or six of them in the party, and these gamekeepers came with with sticks and said, "Right, you were, you're trespassing on this land." You're not, you're not going to get past us. And Benny thought to himself, well, hang on, there's only six of us now, but what if we could get like a couple of hundred people that wouldn't be able to stop us? We'd just do it. And that's exactly what happened. Um, so where we are now, Buff, um, mm. is this is this the point where it happened? The actual trespass? Well, this is, it's kind of, they, they kind of got to the point where they realised that they were they could see the gamekeepers on the top. Yeah. And so they started leaving the path. Yeah. So they were entitled to walk on the path. That... No, they, they were entitled to walk on... Certain paths, but yeah. they, they were given lease one day a year, yeah. and on that day there would be like thousands and thousands of people would walk this one path across the Peak District, yeah. and so they chose a day that wasn't that day. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, as soon as they left the path, then they ended up having what what do what do they call it? Skirmishes, yeah. scuffles, <laughs> and a gamekeeper got his leg broken, and it never quite came to light how that happened. Mm. But um, have you seen the photographs of it? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 blurry good. black and white. Photographs. Yeah, yeah. People with sticks. Yeah, yeah. I think that. It's, yeah, I think um, I heard an interview with Benny Rothman. He said, "Well, some yeah, the, the minority of people involved in scuffles, and one gamekeeper fell over and yeah. sprained his leg or, or broke his leg, and and there was another incident where a gamekeeper hit one of the the trespassers, and the trespasser retaliated with a punch, and that was that was the uh, the sort of majority of the the scuffles that happened, mm. um, but." It, the, the the story is so sort of immortalised as this brilliant um, thing, and I think people forget. I certainly had, had, wasn't aware of the fact that actually um, a group of them, including Benny Rothman himself, did get prison sentences for yeah. for two to four months yeah, for for coming up here. Not incidentally for trespassing, because that wasn't actually a criminal offence. That was the great um, yeah. irony irony of the whole thing. They they were uh, got the sentences for for riotous assembly. Yeah. Uh, where the jury was made up 
was in Sheffield and the jury was made up entirely of, of uh, ex-army officers and landowners. Just, you know, it wasn't, you know, a jury of your peers yeah, at all. Yeah. Was, and and the, the judge made a veiled reference to the fact that Benny Rothman was Jewish. That's right, yeah. Just to make sure that the, the jury all That's knew. That's right, yeah. There's, yeah, there's more than a tinge of anti-Semitism, is it? And also, and also the, the radical politics. He mentioned that um, one of them had a copy of... Uh, the Daily Work, and one of them had a, a copy of Lenin, one of Lenin's works in his pocket, and uh, one of them had a copy of Abino. Yeah. That, 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 that <laughs> yeah. yeah. He got sent down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it and it is hailed as this great, this great victory, and um, or, or maybe say something about the, I think what was so, the fact that they were sent to prison really sort of worked in the favour of the cause really because then then it made people think well hang on wow well, you're sending these guys to prison for this we need to support this you know people should be should be unable to enjoy the the countryside and so what we say in a, a couple of weeks after this trespass uh, what yeah, happened they, in the Winnets Pass yeah they organised another which where they were meeting at Winnets Pass just kind of south of here and they uh, and 10,000 people turned up yeah. and then they carried on having successive you know huge gatherings and it became obvious that in parliament they would they kind of said right we need to how do we stop this? We can't stop them physically. All we can do, it. what they did is they, they used obviously our taxes and they bought off all the, the, the land from the landowners. So we actually paid for it. Mm, right. They all got compensated in the same way as slave owners did. Yeah. But um, that was the way that all this got opened up. Yeah. And I think, I think a lot of the horror of it, you know, why people were, were galvanized and moved was because if you kind of go, well, you know what were what were they doing up there to get prison sentences? Well, they were kind of they were walking and eating sandwiches. Yeah. It's not like, you know, it's not some kind of big crime in anyone's book. Mm. So, and there's a lot more of it to be done as well. I think there's there's still a lot of land. Well, obviously, the it's ninety odd percent of land is still, you know, you, you're not allowed to walk across. Yeah, it. well, that's right. I mean, it wasn't until 1949 that that the Peak District became a national park. It wasn't until the year 2000 until the the yeah. Countryside and Right to Way Act, you know, enabled some some right to roam, and, but there's still, you know, thousands of acres of coastland, moorland that is next that month's is episode, rich. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> next month we, you will take on golf courses. <laughs> 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 we went to one of one of the anniversary events that we went to, was, and and it, there's an annual anniversary of the uh, the mm. mass trespass that was down in um, Edale. And the, I think it was the Staley Bridge, it might have been, or the High Peaks um, male voice choir came and sang. And there was two of the original mm. trespassers there. And they sang Manchester Rambler. Yeah. And uh, whatever you think about that song, it's a bit kind of yank dee 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 dee. But the way they sang it with this like 30 male voices yeah. on that anniversary, it was just like, yeah. everyone was. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. brilliant, absolutely, you know, really moving. Yeah. And then everybody kind of put the sacks on and headed off up the hill. Yeah, Just yeah. to kind of make it real, it was really, great, really good. Yeah, it's, I was in a, a artisan bakery near me. Goodness, the folk singing's <laughs> going well for some. <laughs> hey, my local... Uh, getting paid a lot more than we are. My I local uh, <laughs> hipster bakery, and uh, they had, like... They always have, like, interesting music on there, and I'm, I'm queuing up for some sourdough or whatever. And... Um, the, the Manchester Rambler comes on and I'm thinking, oh yeah, isn't this brilliant? Yeah. And then I can hear the uh, the staff there in the counter saying, um, oh, it, hey, this, oh, it sounds very Disney, doesn't it? And, and and then it sparked them off to have a conversation about the favourite Disney film. What's your favourite Disney film? <laughs> wow. I was thinking, do I, do I say it anyway? I should me, let me tell you that this was actually written by Ewan McCall. It's very Disney. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right. The day was just ending as I was descending. Are we singing this? Well, yeah, uh, yeah do, do you know all the words? Or no, no, I, thought, I hope that if I'd start, you'd, <laughs> oh, you'd right, stop. Yeah, yeah. The, the day, day was, was just ending I and I was descending down five foot to spy up a door. When a voice said, Hey, you! In the way keepers do eat the worst case that ever I saw. The things that he said were unpleasant. In the teeth of his fury, I said, Sooner than part from the mountain, I think I would rather be dead. I'm a rebel.
rumbler, rum a rumbler from Manchester way. I get all my pleasure the whole of one way. I may be a wet slave on Monday, but I am a free man on Sunday. Call me a louse, he said, think of the grouse. Well, I thought, but I still couldn't see. While all kindred scouts and the moors round about couldn't take both the poor grouse and me. He said, all this land is by masters. Watch your step now. At that I should shake in my head. No man has the right to own mountains any more than the deep ocean bed. I'm a rambler, I'm a rambler from Manchester way. I get all me pleasure the hard moulin way. I may be a wet slave on Monday, but I am a free man on Sunday. Right, Barthol, race ya! <laughs>